Hey, welcome back to Bearded Bastard Outdoors. Patrick, your Bearded Bastard Guide. And today I'm gonna go over a construction of a one rope bridge. A one rope bridge system is used to, um, is, is to transport men and equipment, or people and equipment for that matter, over something that's otherwise not navigation, not navigable, like a body of water or um, a gully or something of that sort. So stay tuned as I go over how to construct a one rope bridge. <music> Before I get too much into this, I'm going to cover a lot of knots, um, and all of these knots are going to be available in a playlist um, on my channel. So if you need up close and personal with these knots, feel free to go ahead and uh, you know watch those videos. But I have what I have with me right here: 150 foot uh, rope of PMI um, rescue rope, 11 and a half millimeter, uh, currently daisy chain. So let's go ahead and get that daisy chain out. Now, obviously, a one-row bridge system requires more than one person. You're not going to be you're not going to do this by yourself. I'm sure there's a way that you can do it by yourself, but it's just going to be some extra steps, I reckon. This uh, this is typically done with a team, um, and a couple elements that are involved in this. You're going to have a far side, which is going to go down to the the other end of our um, obstacle, and then you have a near side that's going to trans that's going to have all of our people and our equipment that we're going to transport across. So if it's a body of water, then your far side really needs to be somebody who can swim, right? Your, your first person across and your last person across needs to be somebody who can swim. And you're not, you're not just going to send somebody across with hand them a rope and say, go. Okay, you have to be able to secure, um, secure the, rope mechanism, uh, the rope to the person. And this is done in uh, several different ways. If you have harnesses, you can, uh, you can attach it to their harness. Um, if you have uh, other rope, you can tie Swiss seats and attach it to their Swiss seat. If you have carabiners, you can attach to um, their belt. If you find yourself without any of these um, items though, you can simply just either tie to their belt or you can tie around their body. And I'm just gonna show a, um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna show how to tie a bowline around your body, okay? So I have my length of rope and I'm just gonna wrap it around my waist. So I have my working end and my standing end. And with my working end, I'm just gonna simply cross over and around. Just like so, so I'm wrapped up in my rope. And then with my tail, I'm gonna wrap around. Okay, again, I'm, gonna wrap, I'm just gonna wrap it, around, wrap it around behind it. And I'm gonna grab that and just pull it through, okay? And as you see right there, as you see right there, I have a bowline knot. So let's see that again. I'm secured to the system so if something were to happen and I get swept away by water or something my people can pull me back and with this bowling knot it's not going to come undone so now I'm free to move across all right so now that I make it across my obstacle I have to secure the rope to my far side anchor point and I can do this either with a round turn and two half hitches or I can do this with a tensionless anchor I will demonstrate tensionless anchor first. I remove the rope from my body. Okay, so to tie the, uh, the tensionless hitch, you need quite a bit of material, okay? And it's really hard to know how much material you need until you actually start getting up on it. So you wanna have more than enough. What I want to do is, depending on how deep or how long actually, my uh, start point and end point is is going to determine how high I make this because obviously if I do it too low then my people are going to be dragging or they're going to be underwater or whatever and if I do it too high then they're going to be fighting gravity so a general rule of thumb that we like is uh, between shoulder and eye level so for the tensionless hitch I have quite a bit of material here 
I'm just gonna go around four times. I'm gonna tie a double figure eight. I'm gonna start by grabbing a bite. Then I'm gonna fold it, bend it back on itself and wrap around then back through my bite to create a loop. Again, all of these knots are in a playlist for knot mastery and I'll put a link up. Once I have my figure eight, I'm gonna tap, attach a carabiner to that loop and to my rope, securing it with a locking carabiner. Now from here, it's just some rope maintenance to dress it up. And now the benefit with this is that as tension is applied to it, it's going to be met with um, four runs around the pole, and, but it's not going to, it's gonna be very forgiving. It's not gonna give up too much, um, too much slack. And this is a similar anchor that I do on a lot of mountaineering operations, like three to one system or like recovery systems, because it is very forgiving, okay? So I'm gonna bring the camera over so you can see it better. All right, so here's the system, okay? Secured by a locking carabiner. Locking carabiner secured to the rope via double figure eight knot. I have a minimum of four wraps around, okay? And that sucker's not going anywhere. Another way we can secure to our far side, if we don't have a carabiner, especially, is with a round turn and two half hitches. So in order to do that, I don't need as much rope, okay? Probably two arms length will suffice. Again, from my shoulder to my eye level, and then I just come around. Okay, so that I have one complete turn and I'm back on, um, and I'm back on my uh, uh, opposing side, okay? So this, this rope is obviously running to near side. Oops. So this rope is running to near side. So I'm gonna take my uh, far side running end, or my, uh, my, yeah, my running end, and I'm just gonna tie two half hitches. So I'm gonna tie my two half hitches by simply going over and through. And right here, economy of motion is important. So I have my first hitch there, and I just simply hold it in place, and then I go over and through again. And what I like to do here is put in a quick release. Pull out my, pull out all that slack right there. Okay, and there's my, there's my system. As you can probably already tell though, this isn't as forgiving as a tensionless hitch, but it's much faster and you don't, and it doesn't require a carabiner. Under tension, this, do, this can um, release quite a bit of slack, but not much, okay? And I'll show you closer with the camera. So again, we do a complete turn around our far side and then we tie two half hitches by going over and through and then over and through. And then I put in a quick release. So then, when I'm so then when I'm done, and I need to undo this. All I do is grab this and start to pull it out. Now back at near side, here's where the teamwork comes in because the rest of the team is here. Our our strong swimmer or climber has gone across to the far side, and everyone else is back here, uh, depending on the situation, pulling security or just getting gear ready and getting there and getting ready to cross. Okay. It starts with your tension system. So if the more people, the better, because you can have one person pulling all of this, all of this slack out of the rope. You see how much it flexes, pulling all this slack out while someone else is tying the knot. I'm only one person, so we're gonna do our best. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie what's called a figure eight slip knot on a bite. Keep in tension, and I'm trying not to step into my dead zone, of course, because that's where the water or the obstacle is. But I'm going to try to apply, I'm going to try to pull as much tension out of that rope, or as much slack out of that rope as I can. I'm going to come across and bend. 
I'm gonna tie my finger in slip knot. One, two, right? Bring it back. There's my figure eight in my, in my slip knot. And then, from, and then right here, I'm gonna put another loop in. I'm gonna grab my carabiner like so. Bring in for a closer look. So I have my figure eight slip knot, and then I have an additional loop right there secured onto my carabiner. This is gonna be my tension system. The rope is going to attach into this, and we're gonna be able to pull it like a trucker's hitch. So everybody else, or if you're by yourself, <laughs> you grab, you wrap your, uh, the remainder of your rope around your near side anchor point and I feed the rope through the carabiner make sure it's locked and secured and then I'm just going to simply use this this is my tensioning system I'm going to start pulling it tight the more people the better this is but as one person just do your best okay and once you get all the slack out that you can you do the same thing you did down there but over here to, uh, with a round turn and two half hitches. Okay, so again, I come around. Need, need my slack. So I got my round turn. And then for my two half hitches, instead of grabbing the whole rope, I'm just gonna grab a bite. Throw over, through and keep it close to the tree. Okay, and then do it again. And that's how you secure your one rope. So here it is up close. I got this up to high, went around. And then I got my two half hitches. Okay, some things that I commonly see is that when they go around the tree, it's down here, okay? We want it to be as close to our anchor point as we can because when tension's applied on this, all that slack right here is being released, okay? Because it's trying to squinch together and all that slack is going to be introduced into our line. Right now, you know, it's not too bad for me being by myself not terrible okay another consideration if you have more than one d-link or carabiner you want to you want to put one in your figure eight to make sure it doesn't cinch too tight especially when it gets wet okay but here's your system now a couple ways you can go across you can go, simply just go across if you have a, a carabiner of some sort you just lock onto here and you just walk and it keeps you tethered to your one rope. So if you get swept away by water or if you get you know, lost in a ravine or whatever, this is connected to your one rope. Um, so then you'll be able to you know, keep yourself on track. If you have a Swiss seat, you can also go, you can also get connected to it via your Swiss seat and zip across it. Or if uh, you have thicker rope, you can commando crawl across it. it really, does, There's really no like right or wrong way to get across it. It's just how do you get, it's just how you're gonna get across it. So that's it, how to build a one rope system. That ain't rocket science, don't overcomplicate it. If you found value in this video, it'd appreciate it if uh, the little subscribe, hit that like button and other, otherwise prepare, train, survive and I'll catch you on the next video.